Bonjour, mon amour. C'est jeudi à soir. It's Thirsty Thursday, and we're here for our romance oracle reading, where we uh, take a look on a weekly basis to see what is going on in our love lives. What uh, What's good? Where can we find it? Um, what do we need to know to overcome our shortcomings? And what can we know to expand more into our potential? So I am always using the Romance Angels Oracle. It's an out of print deck original by um, Doreen Virtue. Uh, and then tonight, I think we might uh, clarify with some tarot cards as well, just to go a little deeper. So our first card that jumped out is romantic feelings. So your feelings are real and worth exploring. Um, just a side note, I am like dying over my hair right now. I look like I've been pulled out of the gutter, which I love. Uh, I've been running around in like multiple storms today. Uh, this morning I uh, like felt the storm coming in and all of a sudden the house was pitch black and we had severe thunderstorm warnings. And at that moment, I thought, you know, this would be a great time to go run a few errands. <laughs> so I did. I needed some um, 420 friendly moments uh, and uh, some cleaning supplies because, you know, that's perfect for the rainy day. And when I got home, I realized that there was this, like all this water pulling up around my house and I was worried about it seeping under and damaging the foundation. And so I realized that I followed that, uh, that trail over to the, I was like, it's not leaking from the gutters because my brother had recently cleared the leaves. And I was like, oh, it's coming from the downspout. The, uh, the ground extender had broken. And so normally I would be like frustrated and triggered, but I was like, oh, I can handle this. So I went to Home Depot and I went in and I would, I didn't know what the part was called, but I just like went up to the, like this man found me. He was like, are you, do you need help finding anything? And I was like, yeah, where would I find, I don't know, the thing that goes on your gutter that brings the water down. Is it called a downspout? I was like, I guess I'm needing like a downspout ground extender if you have that and he was like yeah here let me show you a couple of places where you'll find it and literally we got to the box and it said downspout ground extender and he's well, he was like i don't know what you're talking about and i'm like this is this is word for word what it is gaslighting <laughs> anyway he was very helpful man it was nice but uh, very supportive so i came home and i got my tools out and i not only changed the the apparatus, but I also repaired um, the existing structure as well. So I channeled my granddaddy and he helped me. And so ancestor healing is part of cancer season. And we've just had our cancer new moon. We're still in cancer sun season. And so cancer is all about like our intimate circles and our family and our ancestral work and root healing. And so if you've had anything coming up, you know, this week that has to do with parent healing, mother healing, you know, in, in Hebrew Kabbalah, we call that tikkun healing. It's like that planned con soul contract lessons with people in this life that we just, you know, over time have to, you know, correct and, and through a process or whatever. So those things are going to be coming up right now. Um, and those things are also connected with love and money. And money and love are connected. And I was just listening to the beginning of a Kabbalah class that was starting to talk about how food and sex are connected because they are both like sex is a, um, a creator of life force. It's a portal of life force in this world and food sustains life force. So they both have that thing in common, which they're so powerful that they can come with a lot of light and a lot of shadow. So they reveal a lot of light through a lot of positivity, creation, pleasure. But if um, overdone or not used correctly or not treated properly, they could be, you know, do a lot of damage too. So um, I just thought that was interesting and poignant for the moment because I not only am a, like, I love food. Um, it's a huge thing for me. I'm a cancer moon. I'm cooking tonight. Um, I've been out and about. Um, I've been trying to do some, some healing and some like thinking about like things coming up from the subconscious, subconscious patterning, you know, um, 
just doing that, uh, working on that mother, you know, relationship and the mother honoring the parents. Um, and you know, another thing about my Kabbalah class where they were just talking about is, um, what does it mean to honor the parents? And it's like, and they even compared it, oh my God, to a downspout or like to a pipe that has to like, uh, cur like correct the pipe so that the other channels can be clear. And I was like, oh my God, I literally just did that earlier. And I also, I was thinking like, oh, I've got to get a hold of my emotions, right? Because they're going to break my foundation. Um, if they get, they're going to crack my foundation. The foundation being my, uh, like, cer uh, my, my sense of certainty in the creator, my sense of optimism, my sense of faith beyond reason. Um, you know, when, when people impose um, projections on you and life brings difficulties, you know, we, we have do our doubts. And so we are tempted to fall into despair and give up hope. But if you never give up hope, then you, you haven't lost all the effort that you've put in. Um, my Kabbalah teacher, David, was just talking about how if you lose a thing, if you never believe it's lost and you know that losing it is only the only an illusion, then you get to get that thing back, um, the physical item. And if you really think you've lost it, then that's when you've lost it. And so it's so true. It's like whenever I've ever lost an item and I'm just like, you know what? I give it over to the angels. Like I'll find it if I need to. Um, if I'm meant to, it'll come back to me. And it always does as soon as I've released it and know that it's like mine anyway. So um, if you have lost, speaking of in this romantic reading, if you feel shaken this week on, a, on an emotional level, you're not alone. Uh, Venus is going in retrograde. I don't know if it did this week already. I think it was uh, close to, clustered to the beginning of the week because it was suggested not to make any um, false moves or make any big um, decisions or anything over the next couple of days up until you know now, halfway or later in the week because you'd feel so differently about things. So. We're reconsidering, you know, how we have been showing up in relationships and in our um, love partnerships and in our um, relationships at large uh, and also, you know, how we earn our security and make bread um, that has to do with Venus. It's like Venus is like things of material security and also love and beauty and um, sustenance. Um, and so those themes are coming up. So if you feel shaken in the realm of love right now, just know that your feelings are real and they're, they are valid. And that tells me too that it's not just like that your feelings are valid. It tells me that it confirms that the other person reciprocates. Um, because do we really need to know if our feelings are valid? Like, do I really feel this way? I mean, sometimes, yeah. I mean, maybe we are suffering under an illusion or something is magnified under the circumstances. And sometimes maybe we are falling under an illusion and we're building up a crush that's not that big of a deal. Other times the feelings are valid and they're real and they're deep and they're worth um, exploring. <clears throat> but I think that this card also tells us that we're not alone in that, in those feelings, that there are, they are returned. Um, okay, let's continue pulling our oracle cards and then we'll go back in with some tarot. Hmm, interesting. Ooh, we had something come out. Ooh, okay, all right. Calling in our soulmate. We're, we're calling all soulmates, calling all soulmates. Uh, reporting, reporting what's your 20. <laughs> it's taking you so long. We've been searching, uh, well, anybody got a 20 on the soulmate? Searches out, searches out. We've got MIA soulmates. We have the missing persons. Um, the, the missing you all my life. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, so your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help bring you together. So if you're in a period of romantic turbulence, then I would say don't worry. Don't feel like all is lost. Continue to hold on to the knowledge and certainty that your, your feelings are real and they're reciprocated. In the meantime, pray to I like I like to pray for my love life specifically to Jesus and Mary Magdalene. I feel like they were soulmates 
uh, twin flames, whatever you want to say, but they were equal like the divine masculine and feminine for one another. And so, you know, Mary was very pivotal um, in Jesus's, you know, the last when he when he met her um, to, through the duration of their um, their acquaintanceship. In fact, ooh, that kind of makes me want to watch the Mary Magdalene movie. I don't know if y'all saw it. It came out a few years ago. So good. Uh, and jo Joaquin Phoenix was Jesus. It was, it was really good. But yes, yeah, so I like to ask them to help me be prepared for that partner, that equal partner, that soulmate that I want to call in. And that that person is prepared for me and that the way is made um, and that obstacles are taken out of the of the path and that in the meantime, I can trust and follow my divine guidance um, and let go and let God and be in the moment. And, you know, as you meet people, you just kind of have to take that risk and be in the moment. And if it's not in alignment, then make those changes. Uh, but ultimately say your prayers. Um, if you already have someone that you are involved with, then pray for them. And we never want to pray for a specific person and a specific outcome without like acknowledging that it's only if they're reciprocated and it's in their highest good and only, you know, if it is in honoring their free will. Like you never want to try to pull someone to you like specifically because you don't want to get in the will in the way of the will of the divine and you don't want to interfere with someone else's freedom or free will either because they you have to honor their process and um honor their soul and their the the timing you know and the divine timing involved so all you can do is pray that if they are the person for you that they are you know, taken care of and that you are too and that you will come together when the time is right. And if not, that you will be strong enough to let that idea go, let the person go and ultimately be strong enough no matter what to let go and let God. Because you can't, like you can't hold on to a person and, and be with them on a higher level. It's like you always have to be willing to, to have hands open. Um, the moment you're holding on, that's the moment that you have idolized them and you are controlling and it is not um, of a higher consciousness anymore because you are now receiving for the self alone instead of receiving for the sake of sharing, right? There's not, there's not any restriction there. So, Yes, it's like when you can receive someone fully and wholly and love them with all your heart and keep it open and vulnerable and like also know that that it's ultimately like up to God and up to them if they want to be with you or not. And like letting that, letting yourself sit with that and accept it, that's the hardest part about letting go of control issues, you know, and really. So yeah, pray for what's in the highest good of all and just pray that your true love soulmate is like coming closer to you. That keeps it very general and also very specific to creator because he, creator knows who you're talking about <laughs> and also who needs to come into your, into your life. So if that's not the person, then you have to be able to accept that that person may be in the way of your true life, true love soulmate coming in. So that's another reason why you don't want to get too specific. Um, but be very clear about what you want and be very clear about the essence of what you desire. Now, on the other hand, my um, Kabbalah teacher David mentioned that, you know, whether it be a job or an opportunity or an experience or a person or whatever, you can pray honestly to the creator and say, like, this is the desire of my heart and I'm going to keep praying for it and I want it with all my being. But if it's not meant for me, then I trust that it's not going to happen and you're going to take it from me and you're going to turn me off to this and you're going to protect me from it, uh, from all, uh, from, from it at all costs. But I, in my own determination, persistence and, uh, you know, sovereignty and choosing to this with all my vigor and it's like we're required as spiritual students to go kind of all in and be like throw our passion into things right and to learn to persevere uh, but we also need to learn like when something is 
like the discernment of when something is wrong and when something is a no and when something is a complete, you know, it's come to conclusion or when something is toxic or when something is wrong, you know? So it takes discernment there, but you know, we practice and, and experience hopefully turns to wisdom. But okay, let's your your prayers and affirmations and visualizations will help you bring uh, bring you together. So visualize the outcome that you want, the 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 future that you envision. Um, but don't get too caught up in the future tripping, because that can cause a lot of anxiety too, and it can disconnect you from the moment. So be in the present and just feel appreciation and the essence of that partner and how you want to feel when you're with that partner. And you know, that keeps it general, Play, but also specific and clearly decide what you want. So it comes to you now, uh, playfulness. So, uh, to recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. So yeah, it's like right now, the best thing you can do is have a lighthearted energy and a, a sprightly approach and don't put pressure on any situation. Just know that you can let go and be at peace and ease and know that your feelings are valid. Know that you're doing your due diligence as a, a, a spiritual person to pray for your love life. And to pray for that partner out there that is meant for you. And in the meantime, you know, um, being serious or heavy is usually never the answer um, as far as like capturing romance or, um, you know, seducing someone or, you know, uh, recapturing love or, you know, gradually, you know, falling in love or, or whatever you're wanting to do, it's like you're not going to get this moment if it's like always super heavy or super serious. Um, so be playful, be lighthearted. There's so much heavy emotion right now in the air. It's like it's so humid. It's so emotionally humid out. It's sultry. So uh, yeah, throw mama off the train or throw mama from the train. It's like super good Billy Crystal, um, Danny DeVito movie from the eighties. You guys need to see it. Um, okay. Let's see. What's our last Oracle card. And then we will confirm and get a little bit more detail with some, tada, some tarot cards. <clears throat> okay. What do we have here? Um, religious factors. Your love life is influenced by your religious upbringing and spiritual path. So this, it's funny because with Aries shifting, the, so the lunar nodes are shifting into Aries and Libra, the north node into Aries and the south node into Libra. And so that means that we have a new self-concept and we're showing up differently in the world from now on. And that's going to become very prevalent and possible if we lead into that transformation over the next year and a half. Um, the south, that's the north node where we're going. The south node, what we're coming away from, what we mastered in past lives or what we experienced in past lives, what we're healing from past lives is Libra, which is our relationships to life and other people. Um, so the you might you may have religious hangups around relationships um, that were implanted on you from childhood. And, you know, there may be some heaviness around it or some lingering shame or confusion that was put there um, even by, you know, just puritanical habit. It may not have even been related to religiousness. It may have been more of like people just going with the culture, right? But either way, there, there may be something about like your beliefs growing up not matching what you really want and so there's like something that's out of alignment in your subconscious but you're not aware of it and it feels so heavy and important that you need to address it because it might be subconsciously holding you back so there may be a religious factor in the way right now um and then let's pull one more one more Whee. Ooh, heart to heart conversation Okay, 
Um, there was, okay. Okay. Um, a bunch came out. The ones that happened to pop out that I saw were, okay. So heart to heart conversation is the last one that I pulled in that group with the, with all of it together. Um, honestly, discuss your feelings with each other. So your feelings are valid. So don't hide them. Be authentic. Be honest. Like be truthful. Be real. Um, pray for the situation. There are ways to like lay the groundwork before you even talk to someone where you can visualize it and pray for the situation before you even get there. Um, be, you know, lighthearted in and playful in your energy with this person. Don't be too heavy. Um, there may be a lot of uh, like unknown or like unconscious things that are affecting the situation right now that need to be worked through that have to do with shame that have to do with other people's projections. So yeah, um, you know, if you have someone that you are in like relationship with or dating or whatever, maybe, you know, it's good to talk to all about these things. Um, and maybe you can do it and keep it lighthearted or, you know, have some kind of um, ability to communicate about these things together, but keep it heart-centered and authentic and real um, and try to be courageous and vulnerable. Um, there is, so separation, love yourself first and let your friends help. So it may be, I feel like readers are always like, pulling these cards to me that tell me that maybe like somebody might need time apart, but they're like never like, like figuring out that's what it is in the moment. And so love yourself first and separation, but then like all of this stuff about being playful and romantic feelings are valid and like calling in the soulmate, praying for it and talking about honestly, religious factors. It's like, there may be like a period of time apart or like taking space or like a, like you may be in a breakup with someone, um, but it may not be, it may be permanent, it may not be, you never know. But like either way, there's a separation and I think it's probably for um, the purpose of healing um, and, and loving the self. Your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive. So if someone has um, needs their space, let them have it. Um, that will make you more attractive to them. Um, like if someone wants to leave you, like you have to let them do what they need to do. You know, it's like, you can't force them to stay because it will never last. Right. That person has something that they need to reconcile or work on, um, that needs to happen. So yes, if there's separation, then it's um, just allow it to be and use this time to work on yourself and love yourself and put the value on yourself because either way, like if this, if there's a, a person in the situation, including you that needs the separation, then it's like, if that person, you know, wants it from you, just know that if they don't if something is meant to be for you, you can let it go and it'll come back because you know, you pass the illusion that it's never not yours. You, st It's still yours. You didn't lose it. But that takes trust and certainty and faith to be able to like allow to really let go. I'm um, knowing that it's only an illusion, right? But also if it's not meant for you, it'll never be right. And so nothing that is meant for you will be lost and something that is not meant for you will never be right anyway. So allow the separation, love yourself first, hold true to your own value and self-worth. Um, and if you don't own that, then no one else will see it either, right? And so, yeah, have like respect yourself and respect others, um, respect the process on both sides. And in the meantime, like keep moving forward and do your thing and be, you know, independent and also be open to being interdependent and, you know, vulnerable and honest, but, you know, be social with your friends, um, ask for and accept, and accept support from others. 
So yeah, maybe talk to your friends about this. A couple of on like people who you know you really trust um, that will have uh, have your best interests at heart. But be careful too, because people who have your best interests at heart, they have their you know their opinions and their projections, but they're never one hundred percent in the situation. They don't see the whole thing, and they don't know all the whole story either. So be aware, um, but also, you know, tell your friends how you feel, let them be there to support you, have fun with them, you know, go get lost in doing the things that you love to do and, you know, put your love on, you know, spread it out onto things that fill you up, all the things that you love doing, all the things that nurture your soul and help you heal, right? And yeah, and just, I don't know, if you have a friend that's, you know, giving you good advice, then I don't know. It's hard to say, you guys, because people have their own filter and their own perspective that has been tainted by their own experiences and their own subconscious. So it's like, it, I don't know. I'm very careful about who I talk to about things. Um, because there are very few people who I trust and who I know that like on a soul level and on a spiritual level, like we're, we're operating at the same level and we see eye to eye. So be very careful about that. But I don't know, maybe your friends can act like little cupids for you, but don't, don't stir up, don't stir the pot. Don't stir the pot. Don't force, don't push. But yeah, I don't know. I'd say leave friends out of it, honestly, in the end. Pick that person that's like the best friend that you really trust, um, that knows you the best. Um, but even still, people have their good intentions and the only person who really knows what you need to do is God. And that the only way to get in touch with God is through like practice of prayer and uh, getting in touch with Holy Spirit. Okay, so let's pull some um, cards on these main the main first ones. Okay, we'll do this quick because I am getting excited about cooking. Okay, all right, romantic feelings. Ah, oh, okay, so the Seven of Swords came up on romantic feelings. And so this, like the fact that it's like your feelings are valid and worth exploring, Seven of Swords makes you feel like you were, like the wool was pulled over your eyes or something, or like somebody got away with something, or um, maybe, you know, someone was dishonest with you or went behind your back. So maybe the fact is, is that that is the way that you, that that, that whole thing made you feel, but knowing that like your feelings are really valid and that maybe that wasn't the case. Like maybe it wasn't like you weren't getting like tricked. Um, let's do one. Let's get one more on that romantic feelings. I saw one like it's, it's, it's flipped. My lands, where are you? Maybe it didn't. Okay, all right. Oh, Queen of Cups. So, okay, trust your deeper knowing. Be caring and compassionate. But ultimately, you intuitively know really what's going on in the situation. Ego is going to make you feel paranoid and it's going to, it's going to plague you. But ultimately like just invest all that energy back into yourself, right? This kind of, this whole reading to me, it tells me that in, in, in conjunction with all of our recent messages that it's like breathe and breath space retreat like just means like peel your energy off of your love life and put it on to other things and in the meantime be lighthearted you know take good care of yourself be self-nurturing and self-healing 
um, and be there, be compassionate. You know, people go to the queen to talk and to feel heard and to feel seen. And so maybe this person who you're thinking about um, likes to come to you to talk or wants to, um, but they need to feel like it's not gonna be like super heavy, um, that they need to be able to feel like they can open up or whatever. So just um, don't, don't put on false airs because that'll take, that'll make the situation shady. Just be compassionate and honest, but also don't over invest and don't over give to everyone else. Um, instead put all of that energy back on to you for now for your own like self care and self, um, healing. I'm okay, putting these back in. Okay. Calling in the soulmate. What do we need to know for calling in the soulmate? Okay, Four of Swords um, and Tower. So Four of Swords reversed. I feel like that is like things are going to get better. Four of Swords is taking time out to meditate, to heal, to pray, to let something, um, you know, to let yourself rest. Um, let's see. Okay. So tower is sudden change, sudden change that you can't do anything about that. You can't stop that. You don't even see coming. So four of swords reversed, according to Eileen Conley is back into action again. Good opportunities ahead, but tread carefully need for action. Move with care of indiscretion. Be aware. Use discretion, be careful, think before you commit yourself. Feeling of opposition, difficult to get things moving. Indication of unrest and problems at place of work. Don't make promises at this time, situation could rapidly change. So there are feelings of angst and um, things can change um, suddenly and maybe there will be a sudden clarity of um, energy shifting and moving or a feeling of like what was stuck can move forward. So maybe allowing space and just peeling your energy off and letting go is exactly what you need to get the energy moving forward again. Either way, um, don't be in a state of uh, effect consciousness right now. We're wanting to be in a state of cause consciousness because if things are unsettled around you, especially when it comes to your sustenance, um, it's easy to panic and make um, a quick move that you may regret later or that may have been made out of a sense of desperation, which usually doesn't lead to anything stable. It usually leads to chaos. So be mindful, pay attention, um, but ultimately follow your uh, deep inner knowing and make decisions thoughtfully and intentionally like you were already, like if something, like if you were already thinking about something, then take things into consideration. But like, I don't know, don't let the smoke of a situation necessarily throw you into a panic. Um, just wait and let the dust settle because everybody else panicking may alleviate some of your problems as well. So think about that. <clears throat> okay. Um... So, uh, calling in your soulmate. So yeah, just knowing that things can change very suddenly and to be at ease and peace about it. And in the meantime, don't be anxious and don't give in to angst. All right. What do we need to know about playfulness? What is it gonna, what are, what do we need to do with that energy? Um, Queen of Pentacles. So the more playful we are, the more of a good catch we're going to seem like because we're going to seem grounded. We're not going to seem like um, flighty or easily thrown off into an emotional downward spiral. Being playful, um, you know, keeping your energy up, keeping good, taking good care of your physical kingdom around you. But uh, the, this queen is very nurturing and she's very solid and very grounded and very practical. And because of this, she's built up comfort and security around herself and stability. And so, you know, I see that she's got 
the head of the goat maybe um, next to her, which is probably, you know, um, a, like a reference to Capricorn. That is a very practical sign, very business minded, um, but can also be very nurturing as well. Very physically um, capable in skills and, um, and materially speaking. So yeah, be playful. Um, be playful in your work, in the ways that you make money, um, but also being playful in <clears throat> your interactions with this person um, is going to help you move things forward. They're going to see you as more mature um, than if you would have been catty or petty or whatever. Um, also with this, um, it's six of swords. So being playful will help you move things past the difficulty into new territory, right? It's like the the people in this boat are are rowing away from the difficulties of the past. Um, they're rowing away from the storm, the turbulence, and they're go and they're crossing the waters to a new land, a new situation. So whatever has transpired, playfulness is going to help you get to the other side and get on dry land again, and and be you know the the considered to be a good, stable, solid, um, desirable option, I guess. Um, or they're they'll see you as solid and secure, you know, that makes, makes sense. All right. Religious factors. When do we need to know about religious factors? Um, again, queen of pentacles. So perhaps the fact that <clears throat> what I, what was, what I didn't consider here is that maybe there's something that is that you have in common that religious factors are a, a factor maybe you have a very solid spiritual and soul bond with someone and they see you as like someone who is very like mature and that they really connect with and they they like you're a catch because of that so yeah um i don't know just maybe that's if that rings true, just know that that is a factor and that is a positive, something that's working for you right now. Anything else we need to know about religious factors? <clears throat> um, two of Swords. So again, there is this thing where it's like, there's a little bit of a stalemate with that energy too. It's like some of your beliefs line up so much and then there might be others that are questionable. Um, and you know, maybe that's some things that you need to like air out and talk about. Maybe those are the things that are blocking you. And maybe someone is assuming things and, and um, projecting and maybe even in a, you know, not in a, a malicious way, but maybe they have just assumed that you feel a certain way and maybe you don't, or maybe you have more in common than you think and more solid ground to stand on than you think. Oh, oh my God. Okay. So four of, four of wands, uh, this is a, a happy, like stable, harmonious uh, situation and partnering. So yeah, I mean the, the spiritual and the soul stuff maybe line up for real. Okay. Heart to heart conversations. What do we need to know about the heart to heart conversations? Um, oh, again, seven of swords. So do not put on airs, leave your defense mechanisms, uh, at home. Do not manipulate. Do not lie. Do not bend the truth. Do not hide. Um, don't be shady. Uh, oh, okay. So I did see, um, as I was shuffling, Eight of Swords was out. And so that 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 showed itself to me about this. So don't feel fear and panic and then hide your true feelings or say something that's like facetious or sarcastic in a defense mechanism. Like you will you may be triggered and it may be hard for you or scared like you may feel scared or like backed up against a wall or stuck between a rock and a hard place. And it may be hard for you to be honest about that or to really reveal yourself because you feel so vulnerable. But maybe that's exactly what needs to be talked about. Um, and then Four of Cups. Four of Cups is like someone who is, uh, this is like over it, right? This is someone who's just like in a funk and they're focused on, you know, these things here. But what's happening is, is that the Ace of Cups is being 
presented behind them and they're not seeing it because they're just like in this situation right now where they have to they're they're just focusing on these things and these are probably the things that are you know causing them dissatisfaction they might be problems that life is presenting them with the moment and so maybe this person it's like you're trying to be like here you know but really they just need time to figure these things out or they need to go be in a funk for a minute or maybe you know the playfulness that you are exuding around them and your patience and you know your ability to be honest and not put up this big front is going to help them get over that but for now it's like this person is just like they're just um I don't know the person in the the four of cups is usually just like kind of exhausted they need to take a break just like in the four of swords it's like a time out you know for a mental rest to get your minds mindset right again the four of cups is like the time to get your heart set right again but it can also stagnate so just be aware of that. And let's get one more. Oh, the full. Okay. The full. Okay. So we had the 10 of swords, which is the, like a, a difficult end, um, but an end to a difficult cycle. So this is an ending to like all of that, like difficulty and heaviness. Remember that tower card. So that can be like that sudden change. And then the full came up, which is like the rebirth, what, like ready again to like go on a new journey into a new adventure. Oh, unencumbered by the by the baggage of the past and in the cutest little outfit that I love. So yeah, and with the willingness to walk on the edge and take a risk, right? So, um, and then here's Six of Cups, which is like past life or like, you know, mending um fences, um, forgiveness and, um, you know, nostalgia and missing someone, um, six of wands victory after this, like this heartbreak. Right. And the sun, you know, is down here and the eight of swords, the sun was reversed. So it's like the sun reversed. What is the sun reversed? I would say the sun reversed is just like cloudy days right now with that four of cups. But, you know, be the bright sun and be consistent and you be the cause consciousness. And by you being totally in touch with yourself, you're going to be the, the consistent vibration in your own authenticity. So, okay, the sun reverse. Need for a realistic outlook on life. Be perfectly honest with yourself. Stop daydreaming and put some effort into reaching your goals. Depression or failure is not for you. Depression or failure is not for you. Be perfectly honest with yourself and be realistic. A sense of failure or loss is involved. Apply yourself till the problem is solved. Before becoming involved in any project, investigate all aspects first. Don't let anyone pull the wool over your eyes. Be realistic. Look at the situation with eyes wide open. Maybe um, loving yourself first and the separation and um, let your friends help, like listening, you know, it's just like, let all of those things, like be, do that, heal first. You have to fix the spiritual before that the physical will be mended. Um, disagreements and misunderstandings can affect close relationships. So when you have heart to hearts, be perfectly honest and be tender and be open and vulnerable. Don't allow for disagreements or, or misunderstandings, um, not disagreements. Disagreements can happen, but you know, in a loving, honest, gentle fashion. Um, but don't let misunderstandings happen because you weren't, um, you weren't real or you weren't authentic. Um, Disagreements and misunderstandings can affect close relationships. Future plans may have to be canceled. Um, disappointment at home or at work. Loss can be associated with this um, reverse symbol. So yeah, you know, our love life and our work life can be um, connected like with that love and money thing. And so if you're upset by one, it can really make you feel like tight in the other. And so if you get upset by all of this in your love life, that might um, cause a blockage or a restriction in the flow of money. And so the more that you can just feel content in your heart and at ease 
uh, focus on your work, focus on having fun at work and allowing that abundance to flow. Take your mind off of your heartache and let that heal, you know, put your mind on something that is simple that you can do that you can busy yourself with so that you can contemplate what's going on but get that frontal part that active part of the mind that like attached to the ego that gets involved in the story and in the narrative get that part occupied in creating something or doing an activity or cooking or exercising and then the subconscious starts to process and bring you and reveal um, revelation to you and insight and epiphany and that's kind of when healing happens it kind of sneaks up on you like that from the side but uh yeah we've gone on for 45 minutes in our thirsty thursday but i think we've had a lot to talk about because i feel like i have been um kind of erratic and so i feel like now it's like i feel so much more focused and yeah so i'm, I'm excited i'm enthusiastic well, I hope that y'all have a good rest of your week and good luck out there in your love lives and basically just chill, put your intention on self-care and self-love and getting your own kingdom in order and everything else will do its thing. All right. And be honest and be, be vulnerable and be authentic. All right. Ciao.